Today we're going to look at writing zip files with the RAD zip library. RAD zip library is part of Telerix RAD controls for Silverlight WPF control suite for .NET XAML development. In this video we will write to a zip file from a list of files being presented on the screen. The user can select which files they wish to add to the zip file and a dialog will be shown asking them for the zipped file name. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So here we are, we're back inside of Visual Studio 2010 and the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go File, New Project, I'm going to select Visual C Sharp, Silverlight, and then RAD Controls, Silverlight Application, and then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give this the name of Writing Zip TTV for Telerik TV, and then finally I'll go ahead and I'll hit OK. We're going to host the Silverlight application in a new website, and we'll also be using Silverlight 5 for this demo. Go ahead and hit OK, and the next screen you will see is our project configuration wizard. So the first component that I'm going to need is going to be the telerik.windows.zip. This is where the zip library lives. I'm also going to scroll up to the very top, and I'm going to place a check here in telerik.windows.controls. The reason that I'm going to do this is that we're going to create a class that uses our view model base that supports property change notifications. So we'll look at that in just a second. Then we'll go ahead and we'll hit the finish button here. So once our project finishes spinning up, you'll see that we've only added two references here. We've added telerik.windows.zip and telerik.windows.controls. You'll also notice that under our user control we have our Telerik XML namespace automatically added for us. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a change here to my grid and I'm actually going to split out these two column definitions. This column we're about to add a button to actually save the files to a zip file and in this one we're going to add a checkbox and a text block that's going to allow us to select the files that's going to be included in our zip file. So let's go ahead and let's add our first button here. So our first button actually just has the name of button save and its content is set to save zip file. Let's just go ahead and let's resolve this event handler and click back to our main page. So now we have a button and this button will allow us to save the zip file and right under that I'm actually going to use another grid and inside of this grid I'm going to create a data template that has a stack panel and we're going to add a checkbox and then we're going to add a text block. So the checkbox will determine whether or not the item is selected or not and then the text block is actually just going to be listing the file name. And if we scroll down here, you'll see that we have an items control with the name of file list in the item templates actually set to our static resource of item template, which is defined right here. So now that we have our UI built, we can go ahead and we can switch to our code behind and begin adding some code. So we'll be using collections.generic, our windows.controls, collections object model, zip, IO, and then system.txt. So now that that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to define a class called data item. So just for the sake of the demo, I'll just include it here. So if we scroll up, we see I've added a class called data item, but then we have a view model base that's our base class. So we have is selected, which is going to determine, this is on our checkbox, it will determine whether an item is selected or not, and then we have our file name. And you'll see here we have the own property changed, which is the part of our view model base that's inside of the telerik.windows.controls. Now that we have that, we also have our file name, and we're going to drop in an observable collection that's going to keep track of the items. So now that that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in this code which sets the items is going to be equal to a new observable collection of data item. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to create seven sample text files. So you see we have a loop here and then we're going to be adding them to the observable collection that's called items. Once that's in place, our file list.item source is actually just going to be set to the items observable collection. Next we're going to need to determine whether a file is selected or not. 
So I have a very simple method I'll drop in here. And this is just a private bool. Check is file selected. The data item is going to be set to the file and then return file.is selected. We're also going to need a memory stream to create a new file for some sample data. So I'll paste in this and we'll see we have a memory stream, create new file, a data item, and then a file. We have our memory stream, our stream writer. We're going to write the file out. We're going to flush it. Then we're going to return the stream. Now, the only thing that's left to do here is actually add in our code for our save event handler. So let's go ahead and let's look at how we would do that. So the first thing that you see here is we have a save file dialog, and then we have our filter. Next, we have our show dialog. And of course, if the dialog is equal to true, then we're going to use our zip package, which is in the telerik.windows.zip, and we're going to create I enumerable of our data item, selected files, where the file is actually checked. And then for each file in selected files, we're going to select the memory stream, and we're going to add this to a package. And this is our zip package dot add stream. So now if we go ahead and we run the application, we will see we have our sample files here. As our loop, we had seven files. So I can either take the check off or not. And I'm going to take the check off of these two items. And then we click our save zip file. Once we hit save zip file, it's asking us for a file name. I'll just go ahead and name this test1 and then I'll hit the save button here. And if we go ahead and we drag over our C colon temp, we will see we have our test1 file here. And if I double click on this, then you'll see that it only added files 1, 3, 5, 6, and 7, which matches up exactly what we have here. So again, thank you for watching, and please tune in to tv.telerk.com for more videos, and check out blogs.telerk.com for the latest news and announcements.